Who is eligible for EI, employment insurance? For a Canadian employee to receive EI or employment insurance regular benefits, the employee must be able to demonstrate to the federal employment insurance authorities that the individual was employed in insurable employment, which includes most employment in Canada under a contract of service, lost their job through no fault of their own, i.e., fire terminated without cause, voluntary leaving quitting for cause, permanently laid off as part of a corporate restructuring, job loss created by flooding or wildfires. We will discuss this aspect further later in this video. Nevertheless, almost every job departure should be discussed with a knowledgeable lawyer, given how much tends to be overlooked by employees, with EI being one aspect, yet there being further aspects that most Canadian employees have never even considered. Have been without work and without pay for at least seven consecutive days in the last 52 weeks. Have worked for the required number of insurable employment hours in the last 52 weeks or since the start of their EI claim, whichever is shorter. Are ready, willing, and capable of working each day. Are actively looking for work. The individual must keep a written record of employers contacted, including when they were contacted. To prove eligibility and to receive payments that the impacted individual may be entitled to, they are required to complete bi-weekly reports by internet or telephone. Failure to do so can mean a loss of benefits. Specific work situations may have distinct eligibility requirements that need to be considered and reviewed, including farmers, fishermen, teachers, Canadian Forces members, self-employed people, EI special benefits only, and workers and residents outside of Canada. There are also various situations that can result in a denial of eligibility for EI. Although given that these are broad generalizations, with the actual specifics being found in the Federal Employment Insurance Act and its legal interpretation and application, legal consultation is advisable both in relation to EI eligibility and related legal considerations pursued as early as possible with scenarios for possible denial, including if an employee voluntarily leaves their job without just cause. As you'll immediately recognize, this is legal speak and therefore it demands early consultations with a knowledgeable lawyer, preferably in advance of voluntarily exiting or quitting one's job, given that this overly broad reference to denial belies those very highly specific grounds for eligibility, which would require the federal government to pay out of the EI funds it is holding, much like how one's former employer would prefer to pay far fewer employees and far less when they are paid, such that seeking out a knowledgeable lawyer is highly advisable. If an employee is dismissed for misconduct, here, too, a lawyer's early intervention is critical to set the record straight and properly position the impacted employee both in relation to their EI claim and their position relative to their former employer. If an employee is unemployed because they are directly participating in a labor dispute, for example, a strike, a lockout, or other type of conflict, during a period of leave that compensates for a period in which the employee worked under an agreement with their employer, more hours than are normally worked in full-time employment. The impacted employee needs to work enough hours to be eligible for EI, which is based on the unemployment rate in the impacted employee's geographic area. This can range between 420 and 700 hours of insurable employment during the qualifying period to qualify for EI regular benefits. The qualifying period is the shorter of the 52 week period immediately before the start of the impact employees claim or 
the period from the start of a previous benefit period to the start of the impacted employee's new benefit period if the impacted employee applied for benefits earlier and their application was approved in the last 52 weeks. An exception does exist in certain cases such that the qualifying period may be extended to a maximum of 104 weeks if the impacted employee wasn't employed in insurable employment or if the impacted employee wasn't receiving EI benefits. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate in the impacted employee's geographic area determines how many hours they need to qualify. The federal government provides an online tool to look up one's EI economic region by postal code to find out the unemployment rate in an individual's geographic region and the number of hours to qualify for EI regular benefits. It should also be noted that where an employee has received a notice of violation regarding prior EI benefit periods, the number of insurable hours required to qualify for EI regular benefits is increased. If you are inquiring into EI as a result of the impending or actual end of your employment, there are numerous aspects both pertaining to EI and other facets of your employment that you seriously need to discuss with a knowledgeable lawyer. Canadian employees need to understand what they are personally entitled to, which is highly specific and far too often overlooked. While a law firm like our own provides a free confidential consultation that can be particularly illuminating. Thank you.